Hi, the goal of this video is to give you a quick overview of what's in my curriculum called the Elements. Now if you buy the full curriculum, you get a book that has both the student guide, first part of it will be the student text, and then the second half is the teacher section, which is where you get all the patterns for the games and instructions for labs and activities. I do have a student booklet available that gives you just this. If you have like 10 students and you need a copy of this and then each student only needs this. You can also, if you have a digital download, you can make copies of this for your students if you'd like to. But um, sometimes people find it's actually cheaper to order the student booklet. So let's see what's in the student booklet. First you get a nice little colored periodic table there. And I start out by using the analogy that the chemical elements are like ingredients. So most kids understand cooking, so I use that analogy. And I say that the chemical elements are like the ingredients that everything is made out of, everything in the universe. Everything you can think of is made of these ingredients. And then I often have a pencil puzzle, either uh, some questions to answer or very often a puzzle to figure out something that's kind of fun. It'll even have silly things in it, but also science-based. And then uh, here's a song, and you get the audio files for all the songs along with the curriculum. And then every chapter ends with an episode of The Atomic Chef, a little two-page episode where The Atomic Chef reviews some concept we learned in the chapter and then does something completely silly and ridiculous and the kids just love it. And then we learn about the history of the periodic table. We meet Dmitry Mendeleev and here's a little jump rope rhyme. We start learning the elements hydrogen, helium, lithium, beryllium and I encourage the kids to actually do this as an active game. It's printed there. And then um, this is to remind you that there's also a YouTube playlist that goes with the curriculum, which has uh, videos that I've discovered on YouTube that are really good that I recommend and I just post them on a playlist. Now sometimes they'll disappear from the playlist because I don't have any control, you know, if someone else has posted them, if they decide to take them off then there's nothing I can do. But as I find videos I post them here so you get some nice little extra videos for free. Again, I end with a funny puzzle and Atomic Chef. And then we start looking at what's in the jars, the atomic structure. We learn about electrons and protons and neutrons. We also learn about orbitals and uh, the shells. And this is, can be very confusing about orbitals and shells. So I have a special activity that I designed that shows you the orbitals looking like balloons and the shells as the rings. So then we go through and you add pennies or marshmallows or whatever you want to add and we build each atom so the kids understand the rules for how to place it. You always place the see the S first there and there. We did that wrong. S there and S there and then these P's so they're labeled S and P so they see how the S and P orbitals kind of go together to make a shell and this is super important because the number that it has in this ring is going to give it its chemical properties if it has all but one and is missing one, that makes it really desperate to get another. So this is a very important activity to do. And then we always again end with puzzle and atomic chef. And then we start meeting. We learn a little more about. Oh, we learn about how atoms stick together, and uh, this would be covalent and ionic metallic bonding. We learn how those work. And then we start meeting each family group. Here we meet the alkalis and halogen families. And so the rest of the booklet is basically meeting the noble gases, the nonmetals, and learning a little bit about the elements in those groups. And again, we have lots of puzzles and cartoons. So then the teacher's section has everything you need for games. Let's see, this game uh, you can 
copy these onto cardstock. If you'd like to, you can laminate them, make them last a while, and then you can make little wooden cubes to go with it, or you can use the ones provided. I always try to provide a paper. So if you have the digital copy of this, you can print these right onto cardstock. Um, the, if a cardstock's not too heavy, like a, a average weight cardstock will go through. A really heavy one probably won't, but the kind of cardstock that you buy at Walmart goes through most home printers. So you can print all of these game parts yourself if you have a printer at home. So for example, here's the way the little symbol jars would look when you have them all cut out. You can decorate them and then you use them to start learning the names that go with the letters. And there's little games you can play, like a go fish game. And they even have a fishing game where you put the symbol on one side, name on the other, and I even use little fishing rods. You have a paper clip there and I have little magnetic fishing rods. And I found that even middle schoolers will play this. You know, as long as there aren't little kids around, they'll even play the fishing game. And then one of the main games that goes with this curriculum is this one right here called Quick Six. And if I print multiple copies for my classes, I have a lot of kids at the same time, so I need more than one Quick Six game deck. So I print them under different colors of cardstock, and that way if they get mixed up, it's not a nightmare of figuring out which deck is missing sodium or something. They're color-coded. So there's course a card for every element up to I think is a 109. I didn't go all the way up to 118 because uh, when I created the curriculum they hadn't even named them yet and those high numbers don't really do much anyways. They're kind of artificial elements. And then some of the games have multiple pages like the periodic table game. There's four pages that you assemble and these I've made actually single-sided so you can actually cut them out of the book if you don't want to print them. You can use them out of here. And then I trust you to provide things like tokens and dice and things like that. Um, so you provide these. And here is a really popular idea, the periodic table pillowcase. So I give you a pattern that you can put together and slide into the pillowcase and I recommend fabric markers. And this is just an incredibly popular uh, project when I do it. Even students that have already done it, if it's their second time through, they all say, oh, I want to make another pillowcase. So um, my kids really enjoy that project. More cards. And there are some trading cards also. You can see there's some examples here. You know, like you have baseball cards and Pokemon cards or whatever. Well, you have trading cards for the elements. Now I think why, if you have these, uh, these quick six cards that I showed you, these, you know, why would you want to make your own? Well, kids just love to make their own. And they can, they can do anything they want for the artwork. They're kind of like a baseball card in that there's a playing field and you mark out uh, the where it's located and the team is like alkalis or nonmetals. Uh, but kids really enjoy this. Uh, and this is instead of a report on the back, there's a place to put a little bit of information. So this is a, a nice alternative to doing a report about an element. And then I also include some experiments, tell you how to do some simple experiments. And I also have skits. There's a number of skits about um, how the elements were discovered. And a certificate for kids who want to try to memorize part of the table. And I give you mnemonics and all kinds of things going through. So by the end of the unit, the kids will probably know quite a few lines. All my kids learn at least up to Krypton because of the song and some of them want to go on and memorize more. So I always have a little contest where they get a little piece of candy if they make it to the end of each line. Of course, that's real popular. And then they get a little certificate that has a little star on the element that they made it to that they can put in their portfolio.
So this comes as a paperback and it also comes as a digital download and it also is available on CD. So it's just a matter of which you find to be most convenient.